Hi all of you. I welcome you all with a new MCQ based learning. So which of the following has the strongest tendency to gain electrons? Coenzyme Q, cytochrome C, FAD, NAD and oxygen. So what do you think is the answer? The answer is oxygen. Right? So let's see a few basics. So what is oxidation all of you? So what do you think is oxidation? Oxidation is nothing but loss of electrons. Yes, oxidation is loss of electrons. And what is reduction? Reduction is nothing but gain of electrons. Yes, reduction is gain of electrons. Now, when do you say a substance or a agent or a, or a compound is a strong reducing agent? So, when do you say an agent is a strong reducing agent? You say it is a strong reducing agent when it has a strong tendency to lose electrons. Is it? So, it has a strong tendency to lose electrons. So, when the reducing agent lose electrons, what happens? It will reduce the other substance by donating electrons. Yes. So, when you say a, uh, agent to be a strong reducing agent, when it has a strong tendency to lose electrons. So, as the agent loses electrons, these electrons will be accepted by another substance. Thus, this reducing agent reduces another substance by losing electrons to it. Is it not? So, this is a strong reducing agent. So, NADH and FADH, FADH2. So, the NADH and FADH2 are strong reducing agents. Yes. And what, do you, what is a strong oxidizing agent? Strong oxidizing agent is nothing but that substance which oxidizes another substance. Yes. It has a strong tendency to gain electrons. Is it not? It has a strong tendency to gain electrons. So, as it gains electrons, it oxidizes the neighboring substance. Yes, it oxidizes the other substance by having a strong tendency to gain electrons. So, the other substance will lose electrons. So, that is called oxidation. Is it not? So, this is the uh, concept of strong reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent. So, which do you say it is a strong oxidizing agent? Yes, the one oxygen oxygen is nothing but it's fully oxidized it is a strong oxidizing agent is it not so this is uh, the concept of strong reducing agent and strong oxidizing agent and now that you can understand that nadh fadh2 are strong reducing agents and oxygen is a strong oxidizing agent right so one more concept that you have to understand is reduction potential so which do you think has the strongest reduction potential the strongest reduction potential is oxygen has the strongest reduction potential yes so why do you think oxygen has the strongest reduction potential oxygen is fully oxidized that you can't oxidize any further so it has the strongest tendency to get reduced Okay, so the potential, the potential of, uh, it, it has the potential to get reduced. So, oxygen has the strongest reduction potential, whereas NADH and FADH2 are fully reduced so that it has the strongest uh, capacity to get oxidized. So, it has the low reduction potential. Yes, it has a low reduction potential. So, in a biochemical system, the oxidation and reduction reactions take place simultaneously, is it? So, oxidation and reduction will take place simultaneously. So, that is, uh, so that potential we call it as the redox potential. So, what is the redox potential? So, what is the redox potential? Redox potential is the reduction, redox is nothing but reduction oxidation, yes? So, it is the measure of affinity of the reactants for electrons. It is the measure of affinity of a reactant for electrons. Right? So, oxygen is the final acceptor in an electron transport chain. So, oxygen is the final acceptor in an electron transport chain. 
so this has the positive redox potential this has the positive redox potential yes and nadh and fadh2 donates its electrons to the electron transport chain so they have the minimum redox potential yes they have the minimum or the negative redox potential right so let us see a few facts on the electron transport chain so that we can understand these terms better so this is the electron transport chain and look at the area cytoplasm this is the outer membrane a mitochondrial membrane inter membrane space and then inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the mitochondrial matrix yes and electron transport chain has complexes five complexes of which now we are going to talk about four complexes complex 1 complex 2 complex 3 and complex 4 right so complex 1 accepts nadh yes nadh gives off its electrons through complex 1 and fadh2 gives off its electrons through complex 2 right so these electrons flow in these electron transport chain starting from complex 1 to the final complex so now the complex uh, along the complex 1 nadh2 gives off the electrons along complex 2 fadh2 gives off its electrons and they both are carried by coenzyme q yes after which they they pass they are been passed on to the complex 3 and from here to cytochrome c and from cytochrome c to complex 4 so the electrons flow from complex 1 to 3 to 4 and the mobile electron carriers will be co coenzyme q and cytochrome c yes also electrons flow from complex 2 3 and 4 here the mobile enzyme car mobile electron carrier is cytochrome c alone yes so as the electrons flow from complexes as the electrons flow from complex 1 to uh, 1 2 3 to 4 or 2 to 3 to 4 yes what happens as the electrons get transferred the energy is liberated yes as the electrons get as the electron flows from uh, through the complexes energy is liberated so as energy gets liberated energy is liberated this energy is used to pump hydrogen ions okay it is used to pump the hydrogen ions so as the electrons flow from complex 1 to co q four hydrogen ions are pumped into the intermembrane space as the electrons flow from complex 3 to cytochrome c four hydrogen ions get pumped out into the intermembrane space now as the electrons flow from complex 4 and final acceptor being oxygen two hydrogen ions gets pumped into the intermembrane space yes so as the electron flows from each of each complex to the other complex hydrogen ions gets pumped into the intermembrane space the energy gets liberated this energy is being used by the uh, system to pump off the hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space now complex 2 and coq are of the same energy level so there is no change in free energy here so there is no hydrogen ions being pumped out right so whereas uh, the other from complex 1 to co q the energy level differs so the change in free energy level between these two areas is liberated as uh, in a, is liberated that liberated energy is been used to pump the hydrogen ions yes so now you can see at last as the electrons flow from uh, complex 4 to oxygen two hydrogen ions get pumped out so as the electrons flow through the electron transport chain the free energy change decreases okay the free energy change between complexes decreases that is why at last only we are able to pump out only two hydrogen ions yes free energy change decreases as the electrons get pumped from the complex 1 to complex 4 right as and also you have to understand it travels in the, uh, as the electron flows from comp different uh, complex 1 to 4 your redox potential 
increases yes your redox potential increases now you have to accept the concepts which i had uh, told you already which is that nadh nadh is what nadh has the most negative redox potential why is it so it has the low reduction potential why does it have the low reduction potential because it is already reduced so much it is a strong reducing agent it is a strong reducing agent it has a tendency to get oxidized that is why it is donating the uh, electrons yes and it is becoming nad plus so it is a strong red nadh is an fadh2 a strong reducing agents they have low negative redox potentials whereas oxygen on the other hand oxygen on the other hand is the final acceptor of electron oxygen on the other hand is the final acceptor of electron so this has the strongest reduction potential yes and it is the strongest oxidizing agent it is the strongest oxidizing agent that is why it is accepting electrons it is accepting electrons it's the final acceptor of electrons yes so it has the strongest tendency to gain electrons that is why it is the strongest oxidizing agent so that is our mcq here so this is what you have to understand based on uh, the free energy change in the reduction potential so the as the electrons flow through the electron transport chain the free energy change decreases and redox potential increases all right so let's meet again with another mcq thank you all